Hey guys, Eric Coffee here at scoreconvicts.com and this video today is in response to one of our YouTube subscribers. He sent me a comment that says, hey, I've been watching your videos and you keep talking about 8A and federal programs. Why are you not talking about DBE, MBE, and some of the other local and state programs? So I made this video today in response to that question, those comments, so take a look. Enjoy now. All right, so today we're talking about DBE versus MBE versus federal contracts. And in my opinion, federal contracts blow the other two programs out the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and just jump right into it. So when looking at MBE, DBE, and federal, first thing is program funding. Since the EBE supports local and municipalities, we're talking about like your local cities. And occasionally they have issues with paying people. I can speak from experience where right now today, okay, 2017, it's June the 3rd, 2017, and I have friends of mine who are having issues being paid by Miami-Dade County. They've done the work, they've put out the money, and they're waiting on their money. And we're not talking about a week or two weeks, we're talking about a month, two months, and right now, they have no, in the foreseeable future, there's no money coming down the pipeline to pay these people. So we're being warned to stay away from doing work here locally in the county. I mean, and again, these are particular type of projects because we can't get paid. And that's today. In the DBE situation, which is the state level, they're probably not as likely to have these issues. But remember when the market crashed and all the states were having problems with money and some of the states were even considering bankruptcy. Those people who were in those situations in contracts that had to work out there were facing the chance of not being paid and compensated. In the federal arena, what they've done is they've learned from these past experiences. So they've created a policy where they will not issue a contract to a company unless the funding is already there. So once you get a contract or you're awarded a contract with the federal arena, you can rest assured that the funding is already in place. Number two, the prime contractor mindset. Again, looking at the local level MBE, what I've seen is they're careless and they're reckless. And we're talking about prime contractors. If you happen to get your own contract where you become the prime, that's wonderful. But in most instances, we're talking about small and micro businesses, and we're talking about those percentage goals where the prime has to give you a contract. Well, what I've seen is I've never seen a prime contractor blacklisted, whether it's for non-payment or for uh, jerking somebody around or for not, you know, uh, doing something bad to the little guys. I've never seen anyone blacklisted. So if they're careless. They're reckless. They don't have any particular uh, police governing how they should operate and treat businesses, particularly small businesses. At the DBE level, I've seen where well, they're more mindful, right? Because those types of companies that win the prime awards at the DBE level, at the state level, tend to be a little, you know, larger firms because we're talking about airport contracts and we're talking about roadway contracts and things of that nature. So those are larger firms. They tend to be more mindful and conscious, but at the same time, they can still jerk you around and not pay you. At the federal level, what I found in my experience is, and again, I've been working as a subcontractor, federal contracts for the last five, seven years. I've seen where they've actually, it's the opposite. They don't want to lose their bread and butter contracts. So they don't want to jeopardize that by having some small contract report to the agency that that person wasn't paid. Okay. There, again, there's rules and stuff in place and they're actually enforced and followed. So that will be a mark against the prime and his next contract for not having compensated juice. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen, but they're a lot more considerate than at the MBE and the DBE level. And let me tell you, when you're out here and you're working and you do, you know, you, you, do, you accomplish your task, you want to get paid. That's only fair, right? Number three, goals. So looking at the, again, we're all talking about small businesses here. Looking at the small business goals, typically at the state level and the, the local level, they're about $5 million or less. When you get to the federal arena, you're still a small business. If you're in manufacturing, up to 10,000 employees. That K stands for thousands. So we're talking about up to 10,000 employees, you're still considered a small business. And if you're in construction, if you're doing general construction, up to $33.5 million, you're still considered a small business. Even if you're doing specialty trade, I think the threshold is around 16 to $18 million through your average, right, to still be considered a small business. So just on the goals alone, you're talking about almost a tenfold potential for your company to grow into before you get, you have to move into a, to the actual, because uh, they're a mid or large size business. Number four for me is like really critical because 
What I found in my experiences is every company start out one or two people, you know, maybe you and your wife or you and a family member, somebody's doing the office and the paperwork, and then you're out there trying to get the contracts and actually perform it. So I find it strange that at the local level, when two companies attempt to work together, they consider that called collusion. And in fact, uh, most municipalities have what's called a non-collusion affidavit that you have to sign saying that you will not be working with other companies to accomplish this task, which I find to be extremely strange. Now, I know there's going to be some people, I'm going to get some critics and feedback and say, no, that's not really true because we're talking about people who are bidding on a project together. But however you want to twist it, a non-collusion affidavit doesn't support teams. And the same thing at the DBE, where they don't say it's non-collusion, but it's not supported. The person who hires you to perform the work is expecting your particular company, which your employees to actually execute that task. And that's not always the case because, again, some of these projects, their scopes are so varied and so wide range that any one company can perform the task. Even when you look at these large military contracts, right, to build aircraft and rockets, Boeing and some Lockheed Martin, they team together and some of the, these, these multi-billion dollar firms work together to accomplish some of these major tasks for our U.S. government. So I don't understand why the local level and the state level still hasn't adopted the mentality of the federal government where in the federal government to work with your competition is the norm. In fact, the Corps of Engineers and the Department of Defense has formal teaming arrangement programs where you can actually join up with your competitors to accomplish a task because what they understand that these other agencies or entities don't is that the most important part is getting the task accomplished. So for me, number four is a critical factor. Moving on to the next four. Number five, contract rules. Here in Miami-Dade County, we have 30 plus municipalities. So we're talking about one city, Miami. I've got over 30 municipalities. What does that mean? That means that every city that you go to, the contract rules are different. There's no standardized rules. There's no standardized protocol. There's no standardized format. So you have to then learn and adopt 30 plus different sets of rules of engagement, right? When you're doing business. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what you're selling. If you're selling shirts or you're selling food or you're selling jewelry, you've got to learn how to sell to that entity. It's totally different. At the DBE, same thing. It's just at the state level, right? So the DBE, the program is a DBE program, but the way that each state hands out their contracts are totally different. And again, we all get into a situation where you may find there's a discrepancy in the way that you're doing something versus the way they're telling you to do it. And you want to refer back to the rules to find out who's right, right? And make a decision. Again, if you learn what the set of rules are to govern, say, particularly, let's say, Pinecrest, Florida, and then you move over to Hialeah, Florida, there's two different sets of rules. In the federal arena, it doesn't happen. And the federal arena encompasses all of the United States. We're talking about every single state in the United States, but the majority, 90 plus percent of all agencies operate under one set of rules called the FAR. For the other agencies that don't operate under the FAR, they operate under what's called DFARS. So you got one set of rules for every agency in every state, no matter where you go. Number six, source selection. And this is something that, again, I can't wrap around my head, but I'm not making the rules. I'm just telling you why, in my opinion, the federal government and the way that they do contracting, that's the only way that I recommend that people go. At the local level, they're still going with, with the low bidder. Same thing at DBE. They're going with the low bidder. And you find time after time, even if they know that the contractor cannot perform, they still go with them because that's their policy. People are not actually using common sense to make a decision saying, you know what, this guy clearly missed something in the contract, but we still have to hire him anyways because that's our policy. I've seen some of that change where they're actually, if there's something significant, let's say it's 30 or 40% different, they'll call in the, the contractor or the bidder and ask them to, you know, to have them reconsider their bids and also, you know, make sure that they can justify it. For the most part, they're still going with the low bidder. On the federal arena, they go with what's called the lowest responsive bidder, which makes more sense, right? So the federal government's tired of being burned, tired of all these fly-by-night companies coming in, over-promising, under-delivering, and essentially getting the government in trouble where, you know, they've got tasks that need to be accomplished today. They can't have some guy joker tying up the contract and uh, at the end of the day, finding out that he couldn't deliver on his promises. So they can throw out anybody who's deemed not responsive, right? And then go with the next lowest bidder. 
and we're not talking about one or two guys. I mean, if, if you can't prove that you have the ability to, to accomplish the task, they'll throw out everyone's bid until they find someone that can. And if not, they'll throw out the entire job and start over again. Number seven, growth potential. Going back to those thresholds for your small business, the MBE allows you and the DBE up to your goal. So if it's five million, then I mean you basically cap out at five million dollars. At the federal arena, it's unlimited. You're talking about first of all, just on the surface, it's almost a, a eightfold increase from the five million to the thirty-three and a half million. That's just on the surface level. But beyond that. You know, once you graduate uh, and you're doing, say, thirty-three and a half million average over a three-year window, now you can move into a mid-sized level, and still the government, because they do, you know, almost a trillion dollars in business, there's still thousands and tens of thousands of contracts and opportunities for you to participate in. Essentially, in terms of growth potential in the federal arena, it's unlimited. Last but not least, the business development side. So at the MBE, they do have programs where they train you and they have little classes and workshops and things of that nature. Same thing with the DBE. But what you'll find time after time, when you look at the books and you look at all these cities across America, right, in every town USA, they're still not hitting their percentage goals for what they want to achieve in terms of helping small businesses, in terms of helping minorities and women and other classification groups. These programs, they're ineffective, and it's because there's no really teeth behind them. In the federal arena, there's formal business development programs. There are agencies out here that have programs that are designed to work with small businesses and help them win contracts. I mean, the 8A business, I know uh, I talk about it a lot, but that 8A business program, you're assigned a person who's responsible for ensuring your success. And every year they come to your office and check on your progress. And that alone helps you to say, hey, listen, where do you stand? Where are you at? And what are you doing? They will even go as far as writing a letter on your behalf to a particular contracting officer or agency vouching for you. So the business development alone, for me, makes this thing more than a worthy participating only exclusively in the federal arena and just putting aside MBE and DBE, not even wasting my time. Hope that helps you guys. I appreciate any feedback that you have. Please, as always, you know, let me know what you think about what we're talking about, our content here, and uh, we'll see you next time. Welcome back. Thanks for watching. Now you see why it is that I prefer to do business on the federal level as opposed to the state and local levels. But, I mean, if you're still interested in looking at the state and local level programs, there's tons of resources out there. We'll go ahead and add some of those notes in our show notes page below so you can go ahead and direct you to the right place. But if you're interested in doing federal work with me, then take a look below and we've got some links and files and resources that can help you get into that market or that arena as well. As always, please subscribe. We need more subscribers. I'm begging you, please subscribe. If you like what you hear, if you want to keep receiving these videos, let me know and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.